Good morning, my name's Gary. Welcome to the Harry Over Ceiling Sanctuary. I'm not outside doing the walks today. Uh, the weather isn't very forgiving. But uh, I'll do it from in here. Um, you can probably see over my shoulder uh, that lovely picture, lovely photograph of Harry Edwards. And where I'm doing this from, this is the, this was his office. This was where he'd read all the letters that came into him and he dictate replies to the typists. But I'm going to start this morning with the healing minute. So we give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection. We open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. And the Harry Edwards prayer, may I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Brought me relief from pain and sickness, protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me so that I may be conscious of their presence and receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers one to the other and that peace shall endure for all time. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for the highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they're allowed to receive for the highest good. And please join me now in our usual minute silence and we can send our own thoughts to our friends and loved ones who aren't well at this time. Our thanks for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. I'm going to read, as I always do, uh, from Karma Harrow's book, Everyday Karma, about the seven chakras. And I'm going to take you through the seven energy points of the body to take your attention through every part of your entire body, from your toes up to your head. And as you go through, listen to what your body has to say. Notice any tension, any sensations, any feeling you have lodged anywhere in the physical. The body has tremendous intelligence and can heal itself. Be aware if anyone or anything is the cause of your stress or negative emotions out in the world. 
When you become aware of something, you can say it out loud or write it down. Talk about what is making you miserable or frustrated, or any of the feelings you have. Then focus on that part of the body, the chakra where the feeling came up, and imagine the chakra being open with positive energy flowing through it, and replace any negative feelings with a feeling of happiness. Right, your first chakra, the root chakra, for self-preservation. The root chakra is associated with the earth and is located at the base of the spine. It's oriented towards, it's oriented to self-preservation and represents stability, being grounded in the physical being, physical health, survival and prosperity. It controls the digestive system, especially the intestines and the kidneys. If it's blocked in any way, you will experience insecurity and a lack of confidence, anxiety, constipation, problems with your teeth, problems with your spine, joint and bone problems. The second chakra, that's your navel chakra, self gratification This chakra regulates the genitals and sexual energy and is located in the abdomen, genitals and lower back. It's oriented towards self-gratification and brings a feeling of fluidity and adaptability, pleasure and sensation, and a connection to others through our emotions. When energy is stuck here, we have nervousness, gallbladder infections, liver problems, migraines, lower back pain, sexual dysfunction, depression, low energy and apathy, lethargy and problems with the nervous system. The third chakra, that's your solar plexus for self-definition. This chakra is located, this chakra is the seat of the personality, the ego, and is located in the solar plexus. It's oriented towards self-definition, and it's your center of power, purpose, vitality, and self-esteem. It's also where you assimilate food. And if it isn't open enough, you will experience sadness, egotism, repressed emotions, muscular tension, poor metabolism, and stomach problems. And then your fourth chakra, the heart chakra, the self-acceptance. This is located in your heart area, in the vertebrae opposite the main artery that brings blood to your heart. It's oriented towards self-acceptance, and it's where you find peace and balance and compassion. It allows you to love deeply and have satisfying relationships. If it is blocked, you will have lung problems, breathing problems, skin problems, difficulties in receiving love, negative thinking, and a closed heart. The fifth chakra, that's the throat chakra, for self-expression. This chakra is located at the base of the neck, behind your throat, and it's the centre of your vocal expression and personal integrity, and it's oriented towards self-expression, and rules your creativity and ability to communicate if it is blocked, you will experience communication problems, feel overwhelmed, deny responsibility, have weight problems, and frequent colds and infections. The sixth chakra, the third eye, for self-reflection. This chakra is located at the brow, between your two eyes, near the pituitary gland, and it's oriented towards self-reflection. And when it opens, you're able to merge consciousness with the subconscious. It's your center of intuition and imagination. Through the chakra, you're able to go beyond earthly goals. If it is blocked, you'll experience iron vision problems, problems with concentration, and you'll be critical and judgmental. The seventh chakra, the crown of your head, for self-knowledge. This chakra is located at the top of your head, near the cerebral cortex, and is your center of awareness. It's the main connection between the visible world and the invisible world. It's oriented towards self-knowledge and helps bring about wisdom, understanding and spiritual connection. If this chakra is blocked, you will experience a lack of confidence, problems with the adrenal glands, thyroid and parathyroid. After you've scanned the body, developed awareness of areas where you're blocked, continue to breathe deeply and through a prayer, ask for the negative emotions to be released. Imagine a brilliant white light surrounding each particular chakra 
starting at the first and moving up the body to the crown of your head. At each chakra, ask for wholeness and continued awareness. If you do this once a month, you should be able to stay on top of most health problems. Thank you to Carl and Hara for that. It's wonderful. It's very easy to believe that at the time of Harry Edwards' passing in 1976, the miracles stopped. Well, they didn't. And there's one that took place I personally know about. This must be about seven years ago now. I'll tell you about this one. I was in the chapel one morning reading letters. This was about June. And one of the letters was from a lady who recently had this beautiful child. Unfortunately, the child was born with all sorts of birth defects. And she was told by the doctors very kindly that the child might not um, live long enough to go home. And if it did, she had to understand that he wouldn't see Christmas. Well, quite naturally, her husband and her took the child around to other doctors to get another opinion. But nobody would say anything more than the hospital had already told her. Um, and she wrote to us. Well, I received the letter from her, I called all the other healers together and we sent our own healing thoughts for this, for this child and her parents. And I must admit, it quite passed out of my mind until Christmas that year. Um, I had another letter from her, this time saying that the child was quite well, was happy, and was, and was just as happy as most children should be at Christmas. And with the letter, she enclosed a photograph of the child playing with the lights on the Christmas tree. And she said, and she finished the letter by saying, the child is our Christmas miracle. And I thought that was quite moving and quite wonderful. And it's really why we're all here. Anyway, thank you for listening to me. And if the weather's nicer next time, I'll be in, I'll be doing my usual walk around the grounds. But just so that you can all the, the time, distant healing is very effective. I know through that story. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to me and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.